Good evening. I'm John Morris, president of the Scooter Adventure Board. It's my privilege to welcome you to our 2021 year in gathering. For the next 20 minutes, this is so board and staff members will giving you a look back over the past year and a glimpse of what we are planning in the coming year. We won't compare this year to past years in terms of the numbers and financials, simply because 2021 was so radically different in innumerable ways. We are excited to share our accomplishments, which are many, despite having to navigate the constantly changing eddies of the pandemic. We are also very eager to share our plans for the coming year. We hope that we will have fair winds and following seas to help push us towards our ambitious goals that we have set for the organization. Most of all, this is our last chance of the year to give you all our heartfelt huzzas for all of the support you've provided over these past 18 months. Your presence, encouraging words, participation, and investment in our great treasure of a ship kept the wind in our sail. Is hoping that our next year's gathering will be in person. In the meantime, I wish you the very best of the holiday season and a wonderful 2022. Thank you, John. Um, and now I'd like to introduce Peter Souza, who has some insight for everyone. And he's a board member, longtime board member, volunteer, and uh, all around adventure good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Betsy. Uh, this is going to be a look back at 2021 and a little bit before that, and maybe a little after. Um, we had a very successful season. Uh, <clears throat> our plan not to lay off staff during COVID proved very effective. We were able to quickly restart as we moved from 2020 into 2021. It was a very positive move for us. We were able to hit the ground running. The plan was supported by our board and funding had been approved, had proved positive that it was a very, very good decision. We had a successful haul out in April are in the planning process to complete two in 2022. We had over 1900 patrons sail with us during our shortened season. Community, educational, charters, descendants, sales, 95th birthday sale, they were all part of our agenda for 2021. We showed our flag and true colors that Adventure is a can-do organization. We implemented a new user-friendly ticketing system for sales called Starboard Suite, and it worked out exceptionally well for us and for the people that are users. We managed our way through four interim captains during the summer. We, are, we reorganized our adventure organization during 2021. We started staff and vessel weekly meetings and achieved exceptional results, and those are still going on today. Our entire board was re-engaged into team-focused activities and events and an events organization. We had some fun during the year. It was a good time. Our crew and volunteers executed well under strenuous schedules, and we fulfilled maintenance requirements as well. We maintained adventure in an excellent condition, and it shows. We passed our U.S. Coast Guard inspection and now have our COI renewed. We upgraded computers and organized systems in the office. We set in place data-driven calendar for our 22 sailing season, which is going to be a tremendous uh, benefit for us as we move forward into next year. That's already done. We managed COVID protocols for safety of crew and passengers and had no issues reported. We have full board participation in fundraising efforts, all showing support for Schooner Adventure. I want to personally thank each and every person, businesses, sponsors, staff, crew, board, volunteers, for your support from financial to hands-on vessel efforts. It was remarkable. Looking forward to 2022 with renewed energy and focus on a great historic vessel Schooner Adventure, we and you are her stewards for the years to come in the future. Thanks to each of you for your efforts and support. And now I'd like to turn this over to Marga O'Hintlian, our, our treasurer, fellow board member. Thank you, Peter, and thank you, Betsy, and good evening, everyone. I'm delighted to be here to talk to you a little bit about the numbers and the successes of Schooner Adventure. Well, they always say a picture take, tells a thousand words, and we've got a pretty picture here be, before us. Um, 
One, we have our expenses, um, looking at what comprises uh, our spending of $532,000 or so. Vessel operations and uh, preservation take up a lion's share of our, our, our budget and, and our resources. Um, the other balance of the um, expenditures are the behind the scenes work in our office and, and administration. Peter just mentioned the, the ticketing. Um, we, we see how hard Betsy works and, and the office staff and making Schooner Adventure run um, just as well um, offshore as well as onshore. We, do, we did spend some money on events this year, albeit not the gala, um, but we did have some successful um, activities and a, a little bit that we spent on merchandise and other. On the right-hand side of our screen, um, revenues exceeded expenses. So we will finish the year, I'm pleased to say, with, with a modest profit um, or surplus. I have to say, thank you. We receive 64% of our revenue has come from contributions. Uh, that does not go unnoticed by anybody. Um, events and grants are 24% of our, our budget. And then the vessel usage, um, albeit a small but important part of our uh, revenue was at 11%. And then a small amount for, from membership. So all in all, a very good year um, and that we will have a, a modest surplus this year. So I'll pass this back on to Betsy. Thank you, Margo. Um... Yes, I, I wanna echo all the thank yous here. We've already uh, expressed, but I wanna express them as well. I wanna thank everyone for the tremendous outpouring of support. Uh, we've had uh, financial support, I should say, uh, over the past year and a half. And you've all shown how much you care about the old lady, the last of the Dory Schooners, the flagship of the city of uh, Gloucester. So this year we were able to grow our corporate sponsorship up to 15 uh, businesses strong. And our captain circle grew to 90 plus uh, members of that group. So uh, that's an accomplishment right there. And uh, I do wanna give a, a kudos to an anonymous donor who recently donated a, a goodly sum of money just to honor our volunteers. Um, this was done because they were so impressed with all the hard work that our volunteers have have produced over the last year or so. Uh, so I, I just wanted to say that, that people can make donations like that in honor of volunteers, in honor of loved ones. Um, and, and that means a lot to us as well as to those donors. Um, and then all, although you can see from our pie chart that we do fund some of our operations from the money raised from our public sales and our memberships and our events, the lion's share really does come from donors like you. Um, you can see, you know, we're committed to keeping the, the Schooner Adventure available to the community. And as such, we must really rely on uh, a lot of individual donations. Uh, right now, we are in the final stretch of our 2021 annual appeal. And uh, we're, I'm really pleased to say we're having our best annual appeal yet during my three years here as development director. Um, and that's really a testament to the heartfelt support by people like you. Again, it, it all comes back to you. Um, if you look at those two pie charts, it's interesting that uh, the one, the expenses is really, I mean, 50% goes to the vessel. And if you look at our revenue, more than 50% comes from you. So it really ties the vessel to you. You and the vessel is what adventure is all about. Um, our board and staff believe so much in our mission and our work that together they've pledged a $60,000 match. All donations made by December 31st will be matched dollar for dollar up to that 60,000 uh, level. As of today, we are 75% of the way towards fully making, fully lighting that match. 
And I want to appeal to our entire adventure community to join us in this effort, join the board and the staff and all the donors who have already donated and help us get the rest of the way to make it 100%. Through our combined giving, the $60,000 will double. And my hope is that we can make it to $150,000 goal. This will be a bright flame indeed. We will be able to do so much more in the coming year if we can make that number. Thank you in advance for your consideration and contributions in lighting up this match. Your donations now will set us up for a great 2022 season and a purposeful future. Now I'd like to introduce our education coordinator, Jane Clark. And I'm just gonna find Jane. There she is. And you need to unmute yourself, Jane. There. Okay. Thank you, Betsy. Um, my name's Jane Clark, and I'm the education coordinator for Schooner Adventure. I want to tell you a little bit about our past season. The season, uh, this past season, we were able to partner with four repeat groups, including Pathways for Children, the Gloucester Museum School, uh, the uh, National Park Service Future Leaders Group, and Gordon College. We had a total of 107 students and young adults, ranging in age from six years to 20 years, come across our decks to sail with us. The outreach plans for 2020, 21-22 uh, are being finalized and groups will be contacted in January. This season, we're planning to reach out to at least 15 area public schools and summer programs that we have, that we have partnered with in previous years. In addition, we've identified at least 10 new prospects that we would like to partner with, including Boston Catholic High School, Gloucester High School, Lowell's Boat Shop, Endicott College, and many more. We're looking, um, we're hoping that we'll be able to schedule at least 15 sailing or dockside programs for next year. In addition, we've identified a total of 50 to 60 additional second round outreach prospects that include private schools, YMCAs, camps, clubs, and various other summer programs. We're hoping that the pandemic will resolve itself so we can continue to collaborate with our community partners and provide safe and engaging programs for all of our youth. On another note, I'm gonna give you a little update on our education committee. We are working on several projects, including a very important project, digitizing audio recordings of important archival content. Uh, we're also planning to continue to work with Girls Inc. in Lynn um, to fulfill a grant opportunity entitled Women, Women on the Water. This program hopes to introduce underserved girls and young women to the many maritime trades and professions that this population has little access to or knowledge of. And now I'd like to introduce Greg Bover and Captain Robert Wheeler. Thank you, Jane. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Greg Bover, board member and volunteer ship's carpenter. Adventure navigated through some rough waters over the last couple of years. COVID meant that we couldn't sail or hire a crew in 2020 and we didn't even remove the winter cover that year. But the work of preserving our national historic landmark went on nonetheless. Our stalwart volunteer corps maintained the ship in her Bristol condition for 20 months during the pandemic and did so safely with no outbreaks. As you may know, we typically haul the ship out for a few weeks almost every year to allow inspections below the waterline and to replace planking according to a preservation schedule. While we had to skip 2020, the May 
2021 haul out for replacement of three planks took place as scheduled, which set us up well for a shortened but jam packed 11 week sailing season. We often sailed twice a day for a total of almost 90 sails with nearly 2,000 passengers. Lastly, I'd like to pass along the heartfelt thanks of the board of directors to all the people who did volunteer work this past year. Whether you worked on the ship or up in the office or helped out at a special event, your work made a big difference. Since the beginning of the year, more than 7,000 hours were logged by volunteers, a new record. Thank you. You make it possible for adventure to keep sailing. And now I'd like to pass the pass the uh, baton on to Captain Robert Wheeler. Thank you, Greg, for that look over our stern in the wake we've left. Um, but now I'd like to turn our attention to the bow and uh, give everyone a little preview of what we have planned for the coming year. Uh, we're going to start with winter work parties with our volunteers continuing the ongoing maintenance of the vessel. Um, to help in this effort, we will be holding a recruitment sessions to attract more volunteers from the area interested in learning about the vessel and helping the organization. This will be closely followed by an early haul out in mid-March. Uh, we will be doing standard maintenance and inspections during the haul out. And uh, we expect to bring in the rest of the crew early April to prepare for the launch and to kick off our fit out and uprig for the busy season we have planned. Uh, we're planning on over 95 days of sailing this summer. Uh, the early focus will be on education. Um, we will continue that that will continue into the summer, uh, but we will uh, we want to develop our educational program. Um, and a part of our mission. And uh, along with that, we'll also be developing programs in partnership with our peer partners and other organizations in the community um, in an effort to build cooperation and collaboration. Uh, so it's going to be a busy summer and we look forward to seeing you on board. Um, so now I'd like to introduce another one of our board members, Bill Barton. Thank you, Robert. Um, I'm Bill Barton. I've been a board member for, I guess, a little less than three years, and it's been a fascinating time. It's great to see all of you here this evening with us. Nice to connect during um, the, the pandemic times. Um, tonight, we've been taking a look both astern and ahead, and I want to try and wrap it all together. Um, as with any ship upon the sea, we look ahead to the horizon for where we're bound. And as we look at our horizons, I'm gonna sort of box the compass or make a trip around the compass rows. And if we start in the North, there's the topic of planning, which is key to any organization. Planning strengthens and prepares us for the future. And one of the things that's become evident to all of us on the board and staff is that we're realizing a paradigm shift for the organization. We've had two decades of an amazing restoration effort and now we're shifting to a new model that focuses on preservation and program. The shift's only possible with the astonishing efforts of board, staff, volunteers, and supporters like you from the past to the present. And that work has prepared adventure to shine. The staff has leaps ahead on planning both our winter programs and a wide range of sailing events for our sailing calendar. It's an amazing level of planning that puts us now further ahead than in previous years. And it's all been led by our new office administrator, Linda Cody. If we swing over to the right and look east, we see preserve as the topic. And I, I mentioned, you know, adventure is restored in sailing and close to our 1926 configuration. And with restoration complete, it's now a, a focus on preservation. Uh, this includes ongoing winter maintenance by volunteers led by the incomparable Phil Dunn. And it includes the spring haul out that you've heard mentioned this evening. And it also includes planning for other more major preservation efforts in the future, something that all historic wooden vessels need 
especially when approaching the century mark. So if we look down to the south, the topic is engage. As I said, our focus now includes greater engagement with you and the communities we serve. We're creating a series of events and programs ashore and afloat that explore the themes of our mission around fisheries, maritime and cultural history, and health of the oceans. Some of our programs will be here on Zoom, some ashore in person, and best of all, out on the water on adventure. So looking over to the West, we come to educate. Staff and board have been reviewing and honing our curriculums. Education is the heart of our mission. It's how we can make a difference in the world. It's where we wanna grow. We're, prepared, we're preparing to market um, our educational curriculums to greater numbers of youth from grade school to college to adult. And we're developing exciting new offerings like the Women on the Water initiative that Jane mentioned a few minutes ago. And now if we come full circle back to North and the topic of planning again, I wanna mention that perhaps our most significant planning this winter is an executive director search. We're looking for a person to ex execute on this new era for adventure. And we're working with a professional search firm, Pillar Search and Cindy Joyce, who specialize in finding the best in nonprofit executives. And we're looking for a leader with the vision, creativity and charisma to assure adventures lasting impact. We hope to have a new executive director by spring, someone that we can welcome in at our spring gala. And I now just wanna to shift to our schedule uh, over the next six, seven months and take a quick look. There's a lot on it, which I'm not gonna to try to cover in detail, but our horizon ahead has a lot of great things on it. If we look at January, down below that, you'll see formally launch our executive director search, which is now underway. Above February, you'll see that topic of, volunteer, of a volunteer recruiting event that Captain Robert Wheeler mentioned. We're realizing that not just on the vessel, but also ashore for events or docents for educational programs, volunteers are key to what we can carry out. In March, you'll see that spring haul out mentioned. In April, you'll see finalizing our education program updates to prepare for the season. And in May, a date that I hope all of you put on your calendars, May 13th, we'll have our spring gala. And uh, as we shift over to June, you see the day sales commencing and the exciting part of our season. So I just uh, also wanna say that on our horizon ahead, the future we're bound for is exciting. I hope you'll continue to, to support what lays ahead and you can do it with that gift to our annual appeal. And remember by year end, if you give, it will count towards that match. I thank you all for joining us this evening. We're glad to have you all as partners in Adventure's continuing voyage. And this concludes the sort of formal piece of our presentation, but our board members and staff are here to take questions from you. So thank you. And if you do have a question, you can simply unmute yourself and speak up. You can use the chat window or raise your hand uh, and we would love to hear from you. Does anybody have something they wanna bring up? Any questions? Any topics you wanna to, want to raise? <laughs> Hello, Betsy. Yes. This is Jay. Hi, Jay. How Hello, you doing? Jay. How you doing all? Great to be with you all here tonight. Um, I have to say I was totally impressed with the amount of uh, serious donors that we have contributing and what a huge part they play. Um, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, geez, what, what, what can we offer them? And I'm certainly open to ideas. Um, one of the things that I have always valued most about my being in uh, the schooner arena in tall ships is going places. Venture has a hard time doing that because we have so many programs that, you know, operate off the dock or out of the harbor. And that's a wonderful thing. And we certainly should keep doing that. At the same time, I've always been interested in some of the excursions that we do offer, Winter Island, 
the, Provi the Provincetown trip that didn't quite make it. Haven't heard anybody speak about those potential opportunities. Two years ago, when we were still sailing, uh, we were looking hard at those efforts. And I would love to help out and do more along those lines. And wondering if anybody else has any such aspirations. Uh, Jay, this is Bill Barton. The, the, those are great remarks. And it's a topic we've been discussing amongst ourselves on the board and staff. <clears throat> you know, um, what we have is, is a Gloucester story with adventure, but we have to remember she's a national historic landmark. And she's of import, not just to Gloucester, but all those other communities that we, that we can visit. And we have talked about trying to do some port visits to other harbors around Mass Bay or beyond. And we're trying to work some of those into schedule planning going forward. We have a couple of um, sort of logistical hurdles with the vessel, but I think we're working on solving some of those that make it easier for us to do port visits. But we, we certainly see port visits as an integral part of what we do and broadening our, our base of supporters and broadening our educational impact. It's great that you wanna help us with it. It's, it's a, a wonderful topic. Good question. Anybody else? Any other comments or questions? Yeah, Bill, this is Bill Whitney. I have hey, a Bill. comment. If we can, I'd like to see if any of our prospective new volunteers want to help share some of the engineering duties, because I can always use help with all of the things that, that break that need to be fixed. Um, and with some of the projects uh, that we may ha potentially have going forward to uh, upgrade their crew habitability and things like that. So I can always use some help in the engine room and for gen genuine uh, talent uh, in the engineering community. So, uh, Bill, thanks. That's a, a wonderful thing to point out. We're looking for volunteers in many areas. Um, I will say that if you're interested in the engineering aspect of things, Bill is a wizard and also a delightful guy to work with. Um, I'm always impressed when I walk into the engine room aboard Adventure. If you've been there, it's always neat and tidy. That's the way Bill works things. Um, so I would encourage anybody, if, if you have some skills that you might bring to the table, uh, reach out. You can get a hold of Betsy in the office or reach out to, to Bill Whitney directly or any of us will, will connect you. So yeah, Bill would be a great person to work with. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? We have a, just a comment from Phil Dunn in the, in the uh, chat um, saying that he hopes to see us all aboard soon. Phil has been continuing to lead our volunteers and onboard maintenance uh, in this off season. Um, I, I guess if nobody else has another question, we'll, we'll be here for a few more minutes, but I just wanna thank everybody for participating this evening. Great to have you all here. Yeah, thank you everybody and happy holidays <laughs> to one and all. They, they be merry and bright. Yes, by all means, uh, everybody have happy holidays and stay healthy. And if you haven't seen the ship lit up the way she is in this picture, I encourage you to go down to uh, Barber Loop. You can even see it from Stage Fort Park or from, ten from uh, the State Fish Pier and Rocky Neck. It looks great from almost anywhere in the harbor. It's beautiful.